Hello everyone, welcome to this video. Uh, in this series of videos, we are working on an upgraded version of the AZ500 exam, which is now marked as AZ500X. Um, and in this section, we're going to take a look at how to implement Azure AD Identity Protection. Now, this lab is available from GitHub, uh, from Microsoft Learning. And I'm going to give you the link to this video. This particular lab was really, really long. So we really did the first portion in one video where we have deployed one virtual machine using a resource manager. In the previous one, we have really covered these two sections, implementing MFA, which is very important, and also implementing MFA using uh, Azure AD conditional access policies. Now in this one, we're going to look at the Azure AD identity protection, which is again another very important aspect uh, within the Azure. All right, so please take a look at the previous video if you have missed any of that or if you have any having any trouble. So in this lab, what is the goal? Um, we have done all of that, so let's come down to here. So this is telling me it's going to take take us about thirty minutes to complete the lab. Uh, we are going to look at Azure AD identity protection options from the Azure portal. And there are many ways to. Uh, protect your identity uh, and there there is something called the user risk policy and assigning risk policy we're going to review all of that and we're going to simulate the risk events against azure active directory identity protection policies and at the, at the end review the azure ad identity protection reports okay so as always what we'll do we'll go into our portal and portal and this is a directory what we have created in our previous lab so we will go into that directory make sure we are in that directory and again we're going to go back to the security setting and now this time we're going to go to the identity protection so if you are following me from the previous lab so you know that we have created this particular ADATUAUM lab 500 the directory and here you can go to the active directory under active directory under manage you have a setting for security we spent a lot of time under security in the previous lab we looked at the MFA looked at the conditional access policy in the last lab so now we're going to look at the identity protection so what are we going to do in this plane so this blade is going to give you a lot of information so let's go back to the lab on the identity production view review the protect report and notify option so let's see protect report and notify option protect report and notify option where is my protect report and notify option i don't see it over here i have identity security secure score i have the count Okay, so let's look at which blade they're really asking us to do. Security getting started protect and identity protection. Are we on the identity protection? Yes, we are. Okay, so in here, uh, overview blade, review the protect report and notify options. So I guess uh, I don't see any of that right now. So overview blade at least is not giving what they are asking. Uh, protected unprotected account is what we have configure signing risk policy link is down over here new risky sign-in detected is showing up over here configure user risk policy so we have uh, multiple links to configure the user risk policy uh, new risky sign-in detected and then configure sign-in risk policy so user risk policy and sign risk policy we can configure all of that and monitor and improve your identity security score there is no score assigned to us right now at this moment okay uh, under notify so let's uh, come back uh, overview protect report and notify options so let's uh, protect we have the notify option over here users as rigs detected alert so that you can click on that blade let's see what we get uh, Oh, I guess so they're actually talking about protect report and notify all these three things sometimes I overlook so under the notify alert on risk level at or above high emails you're gonna send that email to these two particular users okay you can have weekly digest 
and what you're going to protect you're going to protect against user risk policy and sign in risk policy and also mfa registration policy there are three different options that you have available under the protect section the report section you can see who are the risky users which are the risky sign ins and any risk detection that you may have within here so uh, let's come back so we kind of review what we have now the next task is to configure the user risk user risk policy okay so uh, let's work on that so click on the user risk policy when you're over here user risk policy right over here and once you click on that it's uh, going to ask you assignments conditions and then control and then you have to enable the policy if you want this policy to be enabled so let's see the lab requirement uh, click on users include tab include base select all users options so here users we have all users options already selected so that's good uh, on the exclude tab select excluded users select your user account and then select and then click done so let's take myself out of the selected users so from here uh, let's get that particular user that's me and I'm going to say that you yeah, apply it for everybody else but not this particular user so that's the uh, inclusion and exclusion so all users included and one user excluded so that looks good and then on the conditions click user risk and low and above okay so user risk conditions risk level low and above so pretty much any risk that uh, that our policies identify we're gonna use and apply these rules for any risk that may be either low or higher low medium high all of them we're gonna apply this policy and click on access and allow access option require password change checkbox is selected and click select so what we want to do over here what is the control okay so over here user risk and we will do we'll say okay we're going to allow the access but to do that they have to change the password so again so what you're doing user risk remediation policy so you're identifying and if if the condition if if as you identify that okay there is a risk associated with this login attempt you can provide access but you will need a change of the password okay so let's see what is the lab is saying and set enforce policy on and click save so that's all you need to do so now to enforce the policy click on and save now you have a one policy that is going to evaluate the risk and remedy the risk by requesting a change of the user password okay uh, sign in risk policy is another type of uh, policy that you can set and again we're going to do uh, this time we're going to select medium and above and let's see and select all users include all users insert the all users options in the conditions click user risk so let's go to so we have uh, defined the user risk policy sign in policy uh, apply to all users so you don't need to get rid of anybody else so this is good conditions uh, the risk level this time they're saying okay let's take medium and above and so we have selected the condition and access control allow access but you it requires multi-factor authentication so if the sign in risk if 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 azure thinks that based on the pattern it's a risky sign in attempt it's going to say okay all right i'll give you access but you have to uh, use the multi-factor authentication for your login attempt okay so we have that done so now we can enforce this policy uh, by in clicking it on and then save so we have now two different policies now we have defined 
image registration policy we have not done anything just click on it and take a look at it uh, only if it's cloud based Azure and if you have image server it will not be affected so just not worry I'm not going to worry about it too much in this this portion of the lab now so we have defined two different policies and here simulate risk event against Azure ID AD identity protection policies okay so before you start the lab ensure the template deployment you started in XSS 0 has completed the deployment includes as your VM name yeah I think that we have that VM just to verify so let's go over here and verify I have that VM available to me and I do not oh that VM is available in um, in another directory so this VM is available under the other directory so let's go to the default directory and this directory should have that vm available to me because that's where we deployed that vm let's try to look for it one more time here we go and there we are so we have this vm which is running and it's all configured and uh, doing great okay so let's come over here again back to the lab so we have all of that uh, in the Azure portal directory uh, filter to the Azure tenant associated with the Azure subscription into which you deployed the Azure virtual machine so that's where we are now uh, search for resources services and docs okay text box at the top type virtual machines and press enter we have already done that on the virtual machine click that entry we have also done that on that blade click connect and in the drop down menu click RDB so all that you are trying to do you are trying to download the RDB file and you're going to try to log in to the server okay um, in the server manager on the local server click IE enhanced security configuration so let's first log into the server so to do that I, I'm using a, a Linux machine so I'm just going to open up RDP client maybe use try to use this one and see what happens uh, all you need to do is click on connect and uh, let's go and get the public IP address of that machine uh, let's put that and everything should be good so this is asking for the certificate valid validation I'll say yeah go ahead and connect it this is my password put it in there and say authenticate so it should let me inside this machine so this is the machine that is hosted in Azure so it's logging in as we speak uh, let's go back to the lab and see what it's doing so once it's uh, we are logged in we're going to go to the server manager and from the local server we're going to click on the IE enhanced security configuration so it's opening up it should give us the local server in a minute and uh, we'll configure the IE enhanced security so it's, um, looks, let, let's see what else we are doing in the Internet Explorer enhanced security configuration uh, set both options off and then click OK so yes uh, usually the server manager starts up just by default this is the first time we are logging into this machine uh, so we're gonna go to local server and IE enhanced security configuration so just remember that in the server manager come on be a little fast okay so server manager local server and from here your IE enhanced security thing is usually where performance roles and features So let's go back and take a, a local server then click IE enhanced security configuration uh, we are in here I don't see that uh, configuration options yet so let's let's look for it services events 
a lot of times I usually see that option over here somewhere. I'm just not seeing it right now. Uh, let's give me one second. Let me take a look at it. All right, I think I found that option over here. So this kind of a little bit hidden and it's not this IE enhanced security configuration is not clickable. But you can click on the on button right now it's on. So if you click on it, it's going to give you the Internet Explorer enhanced security configuration. What do you want to do? You want to turn it off uh, as per the lab requirement. OK, set both options to off and then hit OK. So that is going to turn off the IE enhanced security configuration why well, it did not do it yeah it did do it okay is start the internet explorer and and click the cog wheel icon in the toolbar in the drop down menu click safety and then click i in private browsing so let's start internet explorer and we'll try to do as much as from this vm i have some trouble with this rdp client sometimes to type out if i do then i'll just log back into this vm from uh, another rdp client so let's see how far we can move with this so we are done up to this point we are starting the internet explorer click the cog wheel icon in the toolbar and then we do internet options click safety safety is there a safety yeah safety click on safety and do in private browsing uh, right in private browsing once i'm in private browsing let's see let's just copy this let's see if the copy and paste works over here or not uh, uh, paste is not working so let's see. now my delete button is not also working for this so give me one second let me log into this rdp with another another machine all right we, we're back to this uh, virtual machine i'm using it just a different client and this client i think i can type out yeah i think it looks like i can so this would be a little bit easier to do the lab so we are over here and we're going to copy this uh, this is a Tor browser project, so we're going to go to that particular link. Uh, Tor project, do I have everything? Just a Tor project. Dot en. I don't need the last dot, and then hit enter, and it should go to the Tor project. So here I have the Tor project now available this page, and what we need to do. We need to download and install the Tor version of the Tor browser with the default settings. So download for Android, download for Windows. So let's click on click on that link and see what is happening. Gee, where is my download link? Okay, I have to click this. So now this is installing for Windows. So with the default setting, I'm just gonna run and install that Tor browser with default settings within this particular virtual machine. Okay, once this installation done, start the Tor browser and use the connect option on the initial page and browse to the application access panel at myappsmicrosoft.com. Alrighty, so this lab is pretty interesting lab so far. So we have uh, a virtual machine that we created. Uh, in this virtual machine, we are now installing a Tor browser, uh, which is really built to anonymize the user from the internet, and it will go through a private chain of proxies. Uh, so the requester, like if I request something, it will be very hard for the server to uh, figure out where is is the request is coming from so let's see so everything looks like is now done and i have the tor browser now running within my machine okay so once that's done so we're going to go and try to go to my apps.microsoft.com so let's come here put 
to my apps.microsoft.com so it's gonna go to that particular website at least it's we'll try to go to there and when prompted we're gonna try to log in as the ad user 3 account so if you go there now and you take the ad user 3 account from here you put that whole username you click next enter password so you get the password uh, of that user put the password in and you try to sign in in here and look at that it says your sign in was blocked we have detected something unusual about your sign in for example you might be signing from a new location device or app before you continue we need to verify your identity please contact your administrator now that's all you have more details you can click on it it's going to give you some address about your course and id timestamp app name app id ip address device identifier device platform device state and all of the stuff now for this account i don't think we have the we have the multi-factor authentication enabled so, so you gotta contact the administrator before you try to log into your environment to this account so let's go back to the lab so that's very interesting that the, what just happened so it's also saying you will be presented with the message your sign in was blocked this is expected why since this account is not configured with multi-factor authentication which required due to increased sign in associated with this store browser so you're not going to be able to log in at all with this user account because we have already enabled and we said for all users if you find a risk you enable multi-factor authentication is a requirement and that is not even enabled for this user so he cannot log in so use the sign out and sign in with a different option and let's try to sign in as add user one okay so let's over here come down and sign out and sign in with a different user let's try that so let's see what happens so this time user one for which we have enabled our authent or mfa in our previous lab so let's go there and let's get our super secret password for that user as well so this time what do you think is going to happen so it's still an untrusted location but we have multi-factor authentication enabled so it's still going to be considered as a most likely as a risky event and it's going to ask for some verification so now again it said yeah it's a suspicious activity so this time since multi-factor authentication is enabled for this user i can or this user can verify his identity so what is going to verify your identity now it's saying yeah send a text so we have sent a text to my email so let's go to my email and get the code that uh, i'm supposed to get from this validation so let's go in here uh let's see come on my sms window here is the code so let's get that one one new message so that has to be the latest one copy and then where am i we're here so let's go there and say verify so now uh, stay side doesn't matter so just say yes so there we go so what just happened is we said okay let this person log in but if you see there is a suspicious activity make sure that person is using a multi-factor authentication to log into this portal and that just happened okay so that's very very cool feature from microsoft uh, so what it is so again if you read this this time you will be presented with the suspicious activity detected message okay again this is expected since the user account is configured with multi-factor authentication considering the increased sign in risk with the user tor browser you will have to use the multi-factor authentication so because you're using this browser and microsoft knows that there's maybe something suspicious going on we were asked to do a multi-factor we verify okay complete the verification and right now 
we are done with our work and verifying that all the policies are working fine so we can close our rdp session so we can just go this session is already closed because we're using this we can now close this rdp session and uh, that's it so the last thing that we need to do review the azure ad protection report so now how do you look at the report so we can go to the other blade and we go to manage section on the security again so what what do you need to do we were back to the default directory so let's go back to the directory where we have done some some work uh, which is this directory and from here we are are we there switch to the other directory okay all directory just click on this one all right that will that's easy so now we're here we're again going to go to our uh, security so we need to actually we're back as home so let's go back to the azure active directory from directory under management let's go to security what is our security there is the security and so in the security we have looked at conditional access we looked at identity protection and how to define the policies for your protecting your identity we have looked at that uh, we haven't looked these we looked at the mfa um, and over here now we are really looking at the look at the reports so risky users risky signings and risk detection so you can click over here so that's gonna tell you you know what users tried and what failed uh, risky users there's no risky users found but risky sign in we have got risk detection you can click on it and it's also saying that that particular user is a three uh, you know that risk state is risk uh, at, at, at risk and the risk level is medium okay so let's go back to the lab and see if there's anything else they're asking us to do uh, secure getting started report risk users review the ad three user account entry and on the report six simply risky signings review that entry corresponding to sign with the ad three account under reports click risk detections and we kind of looked at all of this um, so now you have enabled the azure ad identity protection configure user risk policy and risk sign-in policy as well as validate the azure ad identity protection configured by simulating the risk events so at this time we have really completed all of the lab so we can uh, get rid of the uh, tenant and resources that we have created in this box and um, actually they're saying do not remove the resources provision in this lab since the PIM lab has a dependency on them so uh, let's usually for all of this lab at the end of the lab we would remove the resources but for this particular lab I'm not going to remove this one since I'm going to use it for another lab uh, one thing that is not covered in this lab but I really wanted to cover in this video as well is uh, is the name uh, is let's see is the name locations let's click on name locations uh, IP range okay so you can define your name location if you need to create a trusted ip location so you can say um, trusted uh, private ips okay and then you can say ip 10.0.0.0 16 so that's the ip that you use for your internet or intranet so you can say okay this is my target so this is how you can enable you you have also seen that you can also also use a country or region and you can say okay any traffic from say maybe you know america so usa united states say all of your business and everything is in your so you just want to trust that traffic so you can ask a name you can say um, country uh, rule or country trust something like that and uh, include unknown areas you can include or exclude please fix more stuff 
do I have more errors in here? Country rule looks good. Okay, countries, that looks good. So for some reason it's not letting me do it, but looks like that's how you should be able to, let's three, let's, three, let's use three. That's also, for some reason it's not working, but it seems like it should be working once uh, you can assign that named location by countries and regions as well. So let's go back over here. So those two things and authentication method is something I have not used previously. Uh, it looks like click here to enable users for the combined security into registration experience. So if you want to use something else like text message, Microsoft Authenticator, password, less sign in or Fido to security key, you can come over here and looks like there's something else called password protection, which I have not used. Looks like here you can uh, define your lockout threshold and what it is, how many failed sign-ins are allowed on an account. So right now it's like 10. So you can attempt for 10 times before it locked out. How long is going to be locked out? Is locked out going to be up to 60 minutes? Enforce custom list. Right now it's uh, no. Enable password protection on Windows Server Active Directory. Yes. And mode is audit mode right now. It's not enabled. Okay. So that's about all that I wanted to cover in this video. This is an important aspect protecting protecting your identity. So remember what we have done in this lab today. Okay, so let's just do a quick recap before we end the lab. So let's go up in here. Okay, just a little. So we looked at the identity protection options in Azure portal. We configured the user risk policy. We said anything above low and above, it has to go through our condition. We configured the sign and risk policy and we said anything above medium or high has to go through, has must go through the multi-factor authentication. Then we try to log in to the Azure store from a Tor browser and thereby we simulated a risk because Tor browser presents a risk to the environment. Uh, and then we looked at the reports. So again, from if you come back to your Active Directory, you go to Active Directory. Okay. So on that Active Directory, we go to again back to your security and from the security we have done the identity protection okay uh, we have looked at uh, we have looked at the user risk policy we have assigned the risk policy uh, we have uh, assigned the sign in risk policy we don't look at too much on the mfa uh, then we looked at our risky users and risky sign ins and we looked at the risk detection and we kind of looked at the users at risk detected alerts as well. And with that, um, that's the end of the lab. So just be familiar with these uh, features. And uh, if you're preparing for the exam, uh, good luck. And um, if you have any comments to make these videos uh, better, please leave the comments. If you like it, give me a thumbs up. And uh, thank you for watching. Good luck.